Okay, so today I wanted to do something a bit more personal since understandably the Everything Wrong With series gives off a kind of negative vibe and I like to juggle a mixture of happy stuff with sad stuff so what we're going to be doing today is a list of champions whose old versions I want to see brought back into the game. Not that there's anything wrong with the current iterations, it's just nostalgia, you know how it goes. I think we can all agree that the effort Riot puts into reimagining old champions is praiseworthy, especially considering they have to do all of that without much hope of turning a profit, given that all of us already have the champion skins and whatnot. Essentially, it's a labor of love, and I can give credit where credit is due. 90% of all VGUs, mid scopes, gameplay adjustments, and whatnot turn out for the better. For anyone curious about the 10% that don't, I have a fun little video for you to check out after this one. That being said, I feel like some old champions were by no means causing trouble in their current state. Could they have struggled with balance issues or maybe come across too one-dimensional than people are comfortable with? Perhaps. But these are 5 champs that I think would be able to survive in the current day environment with maybe a tweak or two. For the sake of clarification, I want these old champions back while still having the current versions of them if I could have my cake and eat it too. After you're done watching this, be sure to let me know what other champions you think should come back. But without further ado, let's get started. First on my list, and this should come to no one's surprise, but old Aatrox. Honor will not save them. Listen, listen, hear me out. I'm not part of the hating new Aatrox bandwagon. I actually believe the current iteration is a spectacularly designed champion from an objective standpoint. However, Aatrox was actually the first champion I ever made in League way back in Season 5. Most of you know me as a top main, but I used to be a jungle Aatrox one-trick back when we had Sated Devour, and it got me all the way to Platinum before I switched to Fiora top following her rework, which I really should make an episode on now that I mention it. Aatrox's old iteration wasn't exactly a bad champion in the same ballpark as old Poppy or old Zion. He was very straightforward and to the point. The reason Say discarded his previous template and went with an entirely new one was, one, for a more thematically accurate depiction of the champion to which they definitely succeeded in, new Aatrox feels way more raid bossy compared to the old one, and two, because there were so many champions just like him. Jax, old Irelia, old Aatrox, Trinomir, old Xinjiao, Master Yi, all of them were made in pretty much the same way. There were auto attackers each with a dash type ability, a basic attack empowerment, and then some kind of utility and door crowd control. Aatrox's gimmick was, of course, battle healing, only instead of through damaging abilities, it was mostly through autos. He was also, I believe, the first champion to have a stance change. Bloodthirst enabled every third auto attack to restore a chunk of health. He used to be a flat amount plus bonus AD that tripled if he was below half, but was changed to missing health instead. The other stance, Blood Price, made it so every third attack would instead do a huge amount of bonus damage at the cost of some HP. Although just like Blood Price, after the mini rework they gave him in 7.5, they took the health cost away. I get that losing HP while attacking sounds both counterintuitive and counterproductive, seeing as that was Aatrox's only form of sustenance and not a very reliable one. But the idea of storing solid damage to increase your combat strength always appealed to me. Bloodwell used to give you a persistent attack speed buff based on the amount of blood you stored, but they eventually changed it to where at max Bloodwell you achieve Blood Rush, providing that same attack speed buff and some bonus AD on top of that. This was to give him trade combo pressure, something he didn't really have back then. Said passive change also enabled him to have a more functional mid-battle power spike, which was endemic to all duelist type champions. Prevailing Wisdom is aware of the short-lived yet very productive timeline for Aatrox's mid-scope, quote-unquote, which was a big reason why there was such backlash over his VGU. They fixed what was wrong with the champion and made him a veritable stable duelist and then later split pusher up in top lane. But like I said earlier, the issue was that there were too many characters just like him. They turned Irelia and Xinjiao from sustained damage to more of a diver type playstyle, and they made Aatrox an ability caster, just so that we didn't have 5 different versions of Master Yi. I don't know, for some reason Trinomir's playstyle never really spoke to me. I play him every so often, but old Aatrox was a lot more in my speed. His Q was a decent mobility tool for engaging and escaping. The stance change effect was also really neat, having the option to choose between more damage or recovering health. Blades of Torment was a pedestrian, albeit decent neutral poke tool. There was a bit more nuance and technique to Aatrox compared to Trindamir, who just turns his brain off, presses R, and spams right click until you die or he does. Aatrox did that too, but there was some semblance of control and finesse. Would be nice to play the old Aatrox one more time. Next champion will be Ryze, specifically the Ryze before the one we have now. I know he had like 20 reworks, so I don't blame you if you're confused about which one. I'll show you unpleasant. Functionally, the Ryze back then wasn't all that different from our current one. Abilities did bonus damage based on mana, he had a basic projectile that did damage, a point and click root, and a splashing projectile that could help with wave clear and AoE damage. The cool thing was that upon casting an ability 5 times, Ryze would get a temporary buff, kind of like Aatrox's Blood Rush actually, gaining a shield and then causing all ability casts during this time to lower in cooldown equal to the cooldown of his Q. So the proper ability casting rotation, you could effectively spam your Q, W, and E for big DPS. He was the magic damage AD carry essentially, and with spell flux being able to shred magic resist by up to 36%, he would do a ton of damage in team fights or even against one person. For more AoE damage though, he had desperate power, gaining free cooldown reduction as well as a buff that gave bonus movement speed, spell vamp which is lifesteal for only abilities, and all spells would do splash damage for half the amount to nearby enemies. 
I should note that Desperate Power's cooldown would also decrease from Arcane Mastery. Towards the mid to late game, when you had ample mana, his ultimate cooldown was effectively only like 10 seconds at most. Obviously, there was a clear problem with Old Rice. He was a stat checker. Even after they made Overload his skill shot instead of point and click, playing Rice was very simple. Charge up Arcane Mastery, then tactically mash on the keyboard to where you could feasibly chain root a single enemy and machine gun them to pieces. At 40% CDR, Rune Prison would turn into an 8.4 second cooldown, meaning you could press W, then press Q and E, which would refresh W so you can press it again, which would enable you to use Q again immediately, which would refresh E cooldown to repeat the cycle over and over and over again. There was basically no counterplay. Who cares if Q is a skill shot when you can chain root whoever you want? Rune Prison used to last 1 and 3 quarters of a second before being nerfed to 1.4, so he was the ultimate anti-melee champion. Other mages and marksmen could still attack him, but tanks and bruisers had no chance. Thanks to his mana scaling, most Rise players went Rod of Ages into Frozen Heart for equal parts damage and durability, a balanced nightmare for certain. It wasn't a very healthy design format, but then again, neither is the current one. What I did like about this version of Rise was that he was a dedicated battle mage, and not just any dedicated battle mage, he was THE dedicated battle mage. Pure, unadulterated DPS, which is why he was so popular in pro play. Current Rise is also a battle mage, but kind of an awkward one. He's less of a machine gun and more of a shotgun in my opinion, where he shoots you with a round of spells before waiting a second or two and doing it again. He's more consistent in DPM at the cost of less DPS, but I've always expressed how I don't understand the point of Realm Warp on a champion like him, a very supportive team coordination ability on a battle mage. I can appreciate something like this on an enchanter, but not on a class meant to shred the enemy team to pieces. Naturally, Old Rice is going to need some fine tuning. Bringing him back in his current state as is would just repeat all the problems he had back then, but I always preferred that iteration of Rice as it painted a very clear picture of what his placed on when conditions were. Continuing on, we have Volibear. I do not pity cowards. Unlike the first two where there's a very distinct playstyle difference between new and old, Volibear is not that different from his old version in the grand scheme of things. Full disclosure, Volley's VGU is to this day in my top 5 best reworks to ever exist and will likely stay there forever. But similarly to Aatrox, I really enjoyed the period of time just before he got fixed up. I covered Majestic Roar in one of the removed abilities episode, which I guess I'll be talking about again. Old Volibear was very stat checky, but he was closer to Darius than Trindamir in that regard. While a very boring passive, I was a huge fan of Chosen of the Storm, as it never failed at catching opponents off guard when they thought you were at kill percent only for you to start regenerating a crap ton of health. Rolling Thunder was also a rather unique ability, as it would fling his target behind him, in some cases being more practical than simply stunning them in place like Udyr. But what really made this effective was the change to Majestic Roar, dealing bonus damage to enemies that are dashing or airborne which he could force them into via his Q. Speaking of Majestic Roar, I already explained just how good an instant no cast time AoE knockback is, letting him basically say f*** you to anyone who heavily relied on dashes to do anything. If you reacted properly, you could interrupt Rengar mid-jump, you could stop Irelia mid-dash, preventing her from resetting Q even if she marked you, you could stop Dristana from escaping with rocket jump, cancel Eason's resonating strike, it was such a good move. A bit too good for how easy it was to use, but Volibear was bar none, one of the best counterpick champions in the game. He was so good at beating the champions that beat everyone else, and like any juggernaut, he could do a lot of damage while being tanky thanks to Frenzy, doing a huge amount of damage especially against enemies at low HP. For a basic trade combo, you would use Q to chase and fling them behind you, E for some damage, then wrap up with W before walking away. If you wanted to all in, you could use Thunderclaws to skyrocket your auto attack damage and repeat the same combo. Very easy champion that was extremely effective at countering hyper mobile enemy teams. Of course, new Volley Bear is 10 times better and has more use cases, but I like simplicity, what can I say? Although I do play the current Volley Bear quite a bit. On the subject of simplicity, bring back Old Graves please. Was he way too similar to Lucian? Yes, but damn it, I miss when he was an actual AD carry in bot lane. I'm biased, sue me. Everyone compared him to Lucian due to having pretty much the same exact kit, only Lucian was more offensive and technical while Graves had more resilience and was much easier to play. His old passive gave him bonus armor and magic resist whenever he dealt or took damage, stacking up to 10 times. Buckshot was a shotgun blast in a cone that did more damage if multiple bullets hit the same enemy, so almost exactly like Swain's current Q. Good for wave clear damage and was just overall a very solid ability, especially on a marksman. Smokescreen was the same back then as it is now, only instead of a slow on impact, it was a persistent slow. Quick draw was a dash in a target direction that gave him bonus attack speed afterwards, and you could reduce the cooldown with every basic attack. So as you can see, Lucian and Graves followed the exact same formula. Q did damage, he was a dash with a cooldown refund mechanic, and W was a utility spell. His ultimate was collateral damage, a concentrated long range projectile that struck all enemies it came in contact with. Once again, very similar to Lucian's culling, only Lucian's did more damage over a longer period of time instead of instantly. As for modern day Graves, it's kind of a love him or hate him for most people. On one hand, I love the uniqueness of his design, and along with the fact that his shotgun behaves like an actual shotgun, but anecdotally I used to always play Graves when I was autofilled daily carry thanks to how simple and efficient he was to play. 
Granted, there's far more room for skill expression and subsequently carry potential with the new griefs, and prior to the marksman update in preseason 6, 80 carries were all very samey back then, so changes were necessary to set them apart from one another just like they did for duelists. Also, admittedly, Old Graves was very generic. There was seldom any reason to play him over Ezreal, Lucian, or Caitlyn since the only thing separating him from them was Smokescreen, which isn't a very convincing selling point. At the same time, he wasn't a bad design by any means. Again, I'd like to point out that I'm very biased because I played the Old Graves, but yeah, I think it would be nice to have Old Graves back. Might just be in the minority though. Last champion is Irelio. There's no turning back. Once more, I played the old Irelia far more compared to the current one. You can make fun of me for not liking hard champions, I don't care. New Irelia was a balanced nightmare for as long as I can remember. An argument can be made for the old one also being problematic, but the one difference between old and new Irelia is that old Irelia had way more reasonable limits than the new one. Old Irelia was, in my humble opinion, a shining example of how a champion can have a lot of carry and frankly outplay potential without needing 50 pages of text on her abilities. Passive gave her bonus tenacity when outnumbered in battle, which may come off as very situational, but for a mobility and auto attack centric champion, it can come in handy more than you think. Blade Surge is identical to old Blade Surge, only it did more damage on account of you only being allowed to use it once on a champion. I'm aware that her current Blade Surge does a lot less damage, effectively forcing her to land Flawless Duet and Vanguard's Edge for more resets, but the damage isn't the concerning part, it's the sheer amount of in combat mobility she has access to. With old Irelia, she couldn't perma chase you unless there were minions nearby, and even if there were, once she used Q on a champion, you were in the clear to put distance between you and her for at least a few seconds, making it a lot more fair of an ability. Hidden Style gave her on-hit true damage and healing, which would definitely need some kind of update to if she were to come back in this hypothetical scenario. Now as for Equilibrium Strike, many people had problems with this attack, myself included. You basically had a point-and-click 2 second stun, which is insane to have on a duelist type champion like Irelia. The condition of having less percent health than a target made it extremely risky for you to attack a low HP Irelia as she could stun you and then burst you down with W, ultimate, and Q if you were also low on health but still had more than her. Conceptually, it was meant to be a comeback type ability, but it was just too effective for how easy an activation condition it had. So in this case, I actually like Flawless Duet a lot more in application. I guess you can say I prefer Irelia's old passive Q and W with their current E and ultimate, although her old ultimate wasn't that bad. I just don't think it's a good idea to give a champion who can build on hit items infinite dashes. Riven gets a billion dashes because she's an ability caster, she doesn't have the luxury of building on hit. Fior is also allowed to dash a ton because 1. Lunge is a much shorter dash range, 2. She has to actively strike you from certain sides to get legitimate payoff, and 3. She needs AD, not on hit items. Irelia gets to build on hit while diving you like a Lee Sin. Of the 4 horsewomen of top lane, she's arguably the most difficult to shut down when she gets ahead by virtue of her incredible advantage state. You can't kite her unless you have some kind of easy get offing tool like Alistar Headbutt or Janna Monsoon, and even then she can probably still catch up to you. Old Irelia was a stat checker, but I'd rather face a stat checker than an overloaded champion, since at least I know for a fact there's a way to shut them down. I just think that the old Irelia was more controlled than the new one. Anyways, that's it for today's list. There were a few others I wanted to talk about like Old Mordekaiser, but I only have room for 5, so these are the ones I'll go with. Let me know if there are any other champions you think would be nice to see again. As always though, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you left a like and subscribed. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsVerm, join my Discord server, and check out my other video on failed reworks if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.